All right, the Third World War, Designer Signature Edition, designed by Frank Chadwick. Originally, it was produced as four separate games, and they all link together. And this new edition from Compass Games gives you all four of those in one massive box. I didn't weigh this thing, but it weigh, it must weigh a ton. I mean, this thing has a lot of content. So I thought about doing a, you know, my standard box opening kind of video, and I thought, well, maybe I'll do this one a little bit different. Show you what comes inside this thing after I've punched all nine counter sheets. And I got to say this about the counters. This is really good. I really like what I saw Compass do with these. These counters punched beautifully. They were shrink wrapped in, um, in plastic to keep them from falling off the sprues. That's how easily these punched. And uh, so they, it was a, uh, you know, it's a big job punching out all those pieces and sorting them. But the way that they packaged it did a really, really good job on it. So as you can see here, we have a lot of markers. So I have some of the some of the, the specific markers I put into individual baggies and then collate them into another baggie. That usually works pretty good. Odds markers in these. This box is big enough that you could use one of those GMT size or even a, um, I think it's uh, DVG Games has those deep dish counter trays. Would probably suffice to get all of these in there. But let me just show you how, how I prefer to do it. I have all of the separate neutral countries in individual baggies and then collated in here. Soviets, I've broken up by different fronts and they are organized into five baggies for the different fronts and actually, yeah, five baggies. Plus the allies like East Germans are in mixed with them uh, in their individual baggies, the so Hungarians, Romanians, and so forth. So they're all organized like so. I put all of the USA, USA units in their own bag. Put the your standard Western NATO allies. You got West Germany, Great Britain, uh, Denmark. I think I have the Belgians and the Dutch in here. And then all of the other NATO just kind of fit into here. So that's how I'd, I've gone ahead and broken those down. And pretty, for the most part, each individual country has its own units in its own baggie and then uh, collected separately for ease of setup. Game comes with one, two, three, four, five, six maps. Now, I'm going to say this about it. You're going to need a little bit of space if you want to play the full game. But if you want to just set up Western Germany and play the Battle for Germany, all you're going to need is one map. And I think maybe two displays, and that's it. So this isn't gonna. This is a manageable monster, but you can break down the individual components. One of the maps they don't even have. It, it's thrown in here to expand the uh, uh, the theater in Europe a little bit to the east and include Poland and and some of eastern uh, part of Europe that was not included in the original Battle for Germany. That's all new, and it's for I think a future expansion. Because I've seen some bits, some markers uh, pertaining to that. So one of these maps you're not even going to use uh, for the rules that ship with the game. Well, I forgot to mention these counters. I put these guys in a fishing box because this particular tray, it's nice and deep. And there's just a ton of disruption markers in different denominations. And yeah, there's just so many of these markers. I just thought that would probably be a great way to store them and access them during play. These other markers, what I tend to do with those is during play, I'll put them into a small uh, cup or some kind of device like this during play. But uh, for, for storing all of these, I felt like that was a really good decision to put them in there. So back to the maps. You got five maps that you're going to use for the combined game. One of these you're just going to keep in the box until we get the rules for them. These are the dice that ship with the game. Of course, I'll probably use my NATO and Warsaw Pack vanity dice for those. Rules. Now, if you've recently got the game NATO from Compass Games, I might do a side by side with these two, uh, these two games because they're they're discussing the same topic. I think NATO has a 1989 order of battle and a 1983 order of battle, so you can play both. That's a cool thing that this will not have. This is a proposed 1989 World War III situation. This rule book, however, has a nice index in the back. 44 pages, including the back page, but I will say a lot of this you're not even going to use if you want to just play the Battle for Germany. 
So the way the rule book is organized, it's going to have little codes. Look for codes that say PG. That's only if you're going to play Persian Golf. CG if you're going to play the combined game. Look for those little things, and wherever you see it, you're not going to need it. So where it says BFG, it's Battle for Germany, so you'll need this section for that. Um, the Arctic Front or Combined Game, you'll need this section. So there's a whole sections you won't have to use unless you're playing the whole shebang. If you're just playing Battle for Germany, you're probably looking at 25 pages of rules-ish. So the rules are pretty straightforward. These are really easy. This is a very manageable monster game. Put it that way. Nicely laid out rule book. The only issues I found is there's a couple places in the rules... See if I can find an instance of it. There's a few places in the rule book where the the letters got separated, and it you could still read it, but it's like there's a space in between letters in the middle of a word. There's a few paragraphs that have that oddity. It's a a strange formatting issue, but it's entirely readable. The only place where that's going to cause you a problem is maybe if you had a PDF of this as it's laid out, and you tried to search for a word. If there's a space between the letters. Uh, that would impact your searches. But as far as reading the rules, it hasn't impacted anything. I think I mentioned the counters. There are nine counter sheets in the game. And they caught some errors. So there's a few counters that... These are all the blanks. And then there's a few counters that they sent replacements for inside the box. And it, So you'll need to pay attention when you punch those counters to make sure that you take the ones that have mistakes on them out of play and put the correct ones into play. So there's your rule book. Now the playbook is hefty. So this bad boy here has a sequence of play on the back. I love that, no wasted space. I hate it when there's no easily referenced sequence of play in a game, and this one gets that right. So that's nice, 83 pages. So a substantial playbook, but what this is gonna have is basically it has the specific rules for each of the four individual games and the combined games. So all the scenarios and everything is found in here. Plus, it's like the briefing booklets for all four original games plus new content all wrapped in, up into one document. Really cool stuff. There's some great material in that playbook. So there you go. That's the, the rules, the playbook, scenarios, all that. Then you have this mountain... Uh, play aids. I can't even pick these all up here. Trying to get my fingers underneath them. There we go. This is a stack of play aids. So you're going to have duplicates of some. This is going to be your factional uh, data chart, organization chart. Some of these are useful to reference at the beginning of the game, but you're not going to be using that a lot during play. There's a couple of those for both sides. The uh, terrain effects chart, unit identification chart. This game uses an interesting mechanic where everybody gets six movement points, but they uh, ha they have different mobility classes, and there's there's a symbol on the counter that you want to look for to identify the mobility class, and uh, and it'll tell you also how easily this is transported by air and so forth. That's what you're going to find in this chart. Fairly important, and there's a pair of those for each player, and there's your TEC train effects chart so you can see the different movement costs based on what movement class you are i think i will show you a counter real close here let me just zoom in on one look at this um west journal let's use that uk unit here you'll notice here he's got a round uh white circle up in the left hand corner with a three inside what that's telling you is it's three stacking points and it is a uh, mechanized mobility unit that's what the circle is. You have the unit identification and its colored stripes showing you its organization. Number on the lower left, leftmost number, is its attack rating. The number in the middle is its defense rating. And the number on the right is its troop quality. So kind of interesting there, but since every unit has six movement points, there's no reason to put a six there. And something new that they did in this edition that they did not do in earlier editions of the game is they made it so that when you flip a unit over, because the units don't have um, they don't have an understrength side. A unit's only destroyed when it's taken disruption points due, due, due to combat 
uh, unless you get an outright destruction result on the, the combat results table. But if you get enough disruption to equal its troop quality, then it's destroyed. So this guy here's got a TQ rating of eight. So it'd take eight disruption to kill those hardy uh, boys there from the seventh corps. Those uh, Canadians actually. So that that's a pretty high quality unit. He's going to stick around for quite a while. What they've done in this game though is they made a reverse side for the counters that has a TQ rating of one less than the front side. It just alleviates a lot of stacking issues with the original game where you don't have to have one of those disruption markers. You won't have to have so many of them in the stack. If you take in just one disruption, you just flip the counter over, then you can start using the individual counters uh, for, for uh, disruptions beyond that. So that's kind of a cool new feature. You have an expanded sequence of play. This is magnificent. The original editions did not have anything uh, like this. So this is great. You got a pair of those. Uh, Let's see what else we got here. We have a lot of these loss displays, critical loss displays, and they're they're organized so you could cut these in half and just position them where they're going to be needed. Like this top portion here is going to be needed for the battle for Germany more than for the Middle East and so forth. So uh, that's something that um, some players may want to do. Here is another one of those. You got TECs, combat results tables. This this is the chart that you're going to be handling the most, probably besides the chart that's got you know the TEC and um, you know you're looking at your train costs and all that. Then you have this that's got your combat results table. There's nothing on the reverse side, so this is probably the one you're going to use the most. This is the the most common charts in the game are going to be on that. There's an odds track which is handy to track the flow of odds and the different combat uh, shifts that can uh, happen during combat situations. And so each player gets one of those. There is an off map movement track to track the movement between different maps, which can happen in the combined game. You won't use that typically in any other situation. There's a nice little turn uh, track for the uh, uh, f f this this will just basically track the overall flow of the game in terms of game turn, your diplomacy, nuclear threat level, sea control of the Norwegian Sea. A lot of those things were kind of disjointed, I think, in the GDW version. It's nicely collated here. You have a uh, overflow box here. For stacking, there's markers labeled A, B, C, D, all the way through I, and you can use this to alleviate heavily stacking, heavy stacking situations on the map, which can, it can get crowded in the Germany map, I think more than the others. So if you run those situations, this is going to be really helpful because you may have five, six hexes that get a little congested. Plus, you can use this to track how many nuclear attack points you have, transport points, uh, this is one of the displays you'll probably want to have on the table in addition to the basic game turn display. You have another one here. It shows the cratering of different airfields. This is the Western Europe theater display and the Eastern Europe theater display and the Northern Europe theater display. So you can cut these into three parts. This is this is a bigger theater, so you need more space. These are pretty small, a lot smaller uh, theaters in terms of air power. So you're going to probably want to cut that into three different sections uh, for use during play. You've got one here for the um, Warsaw Pact. Uh, I think that that is a four-way, yeah, Southwestern, Balkan, Persian Gulf, Western Asia. They put it all on one. I'm kind of averse to cutting things apart, so I probably won't do that. But then you have another Warsaw Pact air display. I got another one here. This is the the remaining one for the uh, for the Allies for NATO. So these displays are going to take up a little bit of table space, especially if you're playing the campaign game. So you can uh, arrange those appropriately. Now the rest of these charts here, these are all setup charts. So the rest of this isn't something you're going to have to worry about having to reference all the time. Uh, this is just to easily set up the game. It's uh, going to show you graphically where all the bits go. They're one-sided, they unfold, and there are a ton of them because really this is four games packed into one. 
All of that to say this, if you're wondering what your $175 gets you, there's a ton of game in this box. So you got a lot of options. If you've been wondering, you know, do I get NATO or should I get this game? Because it's kind of an overlap in, uh, in theme, in topic. This game is going to give you a lot more theater. NATO will probably give you more detail in just the European theater. That you're not going to have the Arctic front or the, uh, the Balkans, Turkey, all of those areas that would be important in a 1989 World War III situation. This game has the whole shoot match. Last but not least, we also have some cards. I went ahead and sleeved them because, yeah, I had some extra sleeves. And I thought, why not? So each side has 12 cards. Are you going to use this in the campaign game? And I think in the Persian Gulf game, and this is basically how the war is going to start. It involves diplomacy in the Middle East because that's what triggers everything is um, proposed Soviet adventurism in the Middle East. So each side has a number of these cards. I wish I could tell you more about how they, they work, but it's been years since I played Persian Gulf and I don't re quite remember how they work, but it's a way for the... Um, uh, for, the, for the game to get rolling, and it kind of sets up the rest of uh, the flow of the conflict. So that is also included. I think there's a total of 24 cards. So one, each side gets one bluff card, and the rest are all diplomacy-related uh, things. So there is a mountain of game inside the box. That is the Third World War. This truly gives all the marks of a designer signature edition. I know I've been a little... Maybe a little critical of some of Compass's stuff, but this one here looks really, really good. And I thought I'd dig, uh, take the time to show you uh, what we got here. I have so many games that have come in that I want to play. I want to play some more of Solomon Islands by GMT. But with everything going on in the world right now, I, I probably want to play Poland. Next War Poland wants to get on the table. And I've been wanting to play the insurgency rules with that system. But then this thing shows up on my door the day before Russia invades Ukraine. And I'm like, ah, too many games all at one time. My thought is I'm probably going to go ahead and set up Battle for Germany and play some of this. And we'll show you a little bit more about it. Am I going to clip all these counters? You know, inquiring minds want to know. They they would look really nice with that that counter clipper I've got. This is the uh, the counter clipper I've been using, two point five millimeter. Does a nice job. I already clipped out a sample from the. Um, you can see it right here in the bag from the the uh, the errata counters. I just wanted to see how well it did on those, and it clipped them really nice. But dang, man, that's a lot of counters. <laughs> My poor thumbs, man. Uh, it's a lot of counters. So I don't know yet, but it is a game that would look really nice with that. So I, I probably end up doing it. Well, I'm Joel Topp, and this is Third World War from Compass Games, Designer Signature Edition. Looks magnificent, tons of content, and that's what comes inside the game.